Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Could do something a little different. I used to do this a lot, the unboxing. I'm pretty certain this these are two vac pen BBS vac fillers that I got on Etsy. I got a notification they were delivered today. So it's the classic China Post with the US Post Office doing the final leg. Very good tracking. I think it got here in about two weeks, if, if not a little bit less. We'll check that out when I check out the video. I'm not a fan of this stuff in here, but it certainly works to protect the pens. I have to admit that uh, Bobby uh, definitely packs his pens a lot nicer. But hey, as long as they get here, that's the important part. Brought a tripod down to the usual height that I set for doing single pens. So let's go, let's go for Dawn first. Slide it out. Classic Pen BBS box. They've used this one for a while. And we open it up. And Dawn looks like um, an ice one. You know, semi-translucent. Uh, it is cold, as you can see from the condensation on the clip. But my first impressions, it certainly weighs more than other pen BBS pens. A lot of metal parts inside of there. You know, this unscrews quickly. Ah, metal threads. That's the first time I've seen that. And you can see the vac filler inside. So Milo's outside barking, so I think I need to check that out. So I'm back. Milo was just barking at the neighbors. So I figured this would be a nice color to see how that pen fills and how the ink gets drawn up. I'm not going to do anything with these pens until they reach room temperature. So let's move on to Midsummer Night. Also, I noticed these pens were disappearing very quickly on Etsy, so I wanted to grab them before they completely disappeared. So this one comes in an interesting kimono, more in the purple shade. Um, don't have this color kimono. I have no kimonos that are duplicates. So we slide this up. These have been outside for a little bit in the post office truck, and then they uh, used a rubber band to attach them to my mailbox up by the road. So that was interesting. I'm glad it didn't come loose and go out into the road. So we squeeze it out. The kimono is a very secure method of, of keeping the pen. There's no question about that. So here we are with this pen, and my first thought is it's not that significantly different than the other one. I mean, there's some interesting color in there. I mean, it's certainly, under this light it shows up much different than it does uh, visually, but they're more similar than dissimilar, and maybe this is the one that glows in the dark, but we need to wait till it gets dark to check that out and we'll let it sit in the light and see if that happens. So that's the unboxing and, and like I said the first response is, is these certainly have a much more substantial feel than other pen BBS pens. Uh, the silver plating is definitely very nicely done. Um, I think the real question is, is what is the number on the band and it is actually a 456. So I, I thought I saw other versions of this pen that had uh, a different number on it, but then they may have been prototypes on, on Etsy. Uh, Two-tone nib on, on both of these, which is generally an upscale and, and adds a little bit of cost to the price of the item. Of course, they came with no instructions, but, you know, I'm familiar with fact fills. So I'm going to do my investigation, let these warm up, and we'll do a video on inking the pens. The real question is, will it glow in the dark? And the answer is, yes it does. <laughs> My first glow-in-the-dark pen. And the fact that it's a vac filler makes it even more impressive. So, it's not a glow stick, but it certainly can be found when the lights are off. Many viewers have asked about adding links to eBay auctions, but the auctions change a lot. 
Here's two auctions I found that show the most the colors of the four, five, six. And here's delving into the auction. You can see a lot of colors are sold out, not the two that I have in, in this review. But when you pick a particular color, you'll see that the price may change substantially. You need to be very aware when you do these auctions that you select what you want and you get the price you want. Let's, uh, Let's uh, delve a little bit deeper into how this Pen BBS Vac Filler Pen was done. So to me, the most impressive thing is this barrel. You know, this metal ring and threaded here at this end is very nice. Also metal here. You can see there's a, a flat spot there. So with the right wrench, you could unscrew it. And that would let you take the piston out. If you wanted to disconnect the end port, you can see there's a, a thread there. You'd need some type of tool to go in there and, and move it around. It's a, not know what it's called, but I'm certain it's easy to find. And then that will let you take this cap off. So the whole pen is completely, can be completely disassembled. The other thing I like is pen BBS is back to this full cap band on the bottom of the cap. So that's going to give you the most amount of secure, securitous and longevity. You can see four, five, six. So it is labeled with the number. And then this is a new thing. This is Shanghai on the back. So it's Pen BBS 456 Shanghai. And it, I mean, to me, this Pen BBS is up to quality. This feels substantial. And as usual, this is the standard section that they've used quite a bit. There's a nice O ring, substantial O ring here at the top. And that's where you want the O ring because that's going to be in touch. If you don't have something there, then ink will get into the th threads. I mean, I'll still silicone grease this O-ring and, and the threads because I just like to have a little bit of extra protection there. So overall, I say kudos for what uh, Pen BBS has done. So I've, obviously there's one pen that this reminds you of, is, and I happen to have it, is the Twisby Vac Mini which doesn't share a lot of design elements. I mean, it does have that solid band at the bottom of the cap. Insert liner here versus a machined liner in the Pen BBS. So obviously there's a visual difference there. The other thing you'll notice is uh, no metal threads here at the bottom, like there is on the Pen BBS. Your standard this is a standard number five pull out and push in nib, whereas on the Pen BBS it's a number six. That looks like a could be a bigger nib there. Not quite. I don't know. I'm not good at just judging these things offhand. Lengthwise, it looks about the same length, but the shoulders are definitely not as uh, deep. And the other thing is different is here you have a metal piece here. It's plastic. It has the same ground sides to it and also inside that is also plastic versus metal that you would have to unscrew to take the whole piston knob apart so one thing you would say is uh, Chris uh, what's so fast this is a Twisby wrench fit and the Twisby wrench is a little bit loose I wouldn't quite use it it does fit okay on this vac mini which is a bigger diameter. So this part here is actually 6.5 millimeters across and this wrench is like a 7.2 millimeter. So, you know, it's a little bit off. I would not use it because you really want to have a, a wrench match. The Vac Mini has these nice facets in it, which uh, is a Twisby trademark. And the piston really moves with a little bit more effort. Of course, I have the, now they're both about the same. So that's the comparison. I'm certain you were all waiting for that.
So I think we're ready to ink it up. I've uh, cleaned this out, so trying to figure out what ink I want is going to be a challenge, but we'll be back with some ink. Of course, I'm going to start with an ink that I haven't written with before, but I want a nice intense blue, and I think this will be the one. So I only have a few uh, Monteverdi inks. I don't use them that often, but I'm happy with this blue. And they certainly do promote the technology of their ink. Here's a color card on the Super Show Blue. It is definitely a blue ink. It's a little bit of shimmer there. And obviously we did um, chromatography. I read um, an interesting blog on using chromatography paper, so I bought some from Amazon. That's where I put down the line of ink there. And I kept this part in water for about two minutes. And the water moves very, very slowly on this paper. I expected it to go up much higher, but it didn't. But that's a pretty intense blue. But let's compare it to the filter paper that I used to use. Need to get the shading there, right? And to me, I wouldn't say that the chromatography paper blows me out of the water. I find both of these to be interesting, but the filter paper actually seems to show a little bit more. There may be some pink that shows up here, but it's very, very light. So what inks might I compare to the Super Show Blue? Well, here's the two that I put together. Soda Pop Blue and Presidential Blue, but uh, Super Show Blue definitely blues them away. It's, it's much more of an intense dark blue, saturated blue, and uh, a clean blue from my perspective. Now we're going to try to show this fill. So we have it already retracted. Put it in the ink. Push down on the piston. And there we go. So that was a decent first fill. There are ways of getting more ink into vac fills, but I'm happy with this to start. So I did the method that works on vac fills where the first fill came up to about here. Then what I did was is I inverted the pen, brought the piston down so it was just touching the ink, then put the nib back in the bottle, pushed it down, and I got, you know, another maybe half a milliliter of ink. But that's, that's a lot of ink in there, so I'm happy with that. We have some nice sunlight coming in, so I haven't really talked about this acrylic. And it's very interesting. It has some other color bits in it. And it has a little bit of pearlescence in it. Interesting. You know, I guess, is it an art form when the creator of this acrylic comes up with this combination and when it's filled with ink, then it becomes something a little different. Which I think makes this a very, very good color and resin to use for this type of pen. You know, it's not a totally transparent, not a crystal clear, but just has some variety and nuances to it, which I think make it very interesting. Especially with the ink in it. So in case you hadn't thought, I think this is a great looking acrylic resin. So the pen posts nicely, fits well in the hand, I like the section, and I have to admit that the ink in this resin is certainly nice. I don't have really any sunlight coming in, so it's just basically the LEDs. So, so far I'm happy. So we're going to write with the nib a little bit more and then talk about my impressions. So now that I've used this pen for a while, I have to admit, I understand all the enthusiasm of people that have handled it, wrote with it, filled it, all of those things. It's certainly, to me, a departure 
from uh, Pen BBS pens, you know, the 308s, 309s, and, and the other ones were great pens, but this is an excellent pen. This is very substantial. To me, all the engineering parts fit together well. It, it just feels good in the hand, which is really the most impressive thing. Um, they're a little bit hard to find. Um, not exactly that expensive. They're a little bit less than the 456, which is also another pen that I've grown to enjoy more. You know, posted, it still fits extremely well in the hand. I just think that ink and that acrylic just looks really nice. So let's quit dilly-dallying and let's put nib to paper. I mean, this is smooth. It's a little bit on the wet side. Certainly much nicer than the two-tone nib I had in the 469. So I have to say that that was an anomaly. I like this ink. I think it works very very well in this pen I mean really consistent this just feels good to write with it's it's hard for me to really describe it and put it into words I like the balance I like the weight you know it's about 30 grams so it's a little bit heavier about 10 grams heavier than, than most of the other pen BS's and to me that just makes it feel substantial and that's the really wonderful part. So let me give this a rating. I'm going to go 9.5. I mean, it's just, I don't find any flaws with it. You know, on all levels, it's great. And with that, even though I'm not a great vac filler, I think it's, it's um, you know, a complicated filling system. But obviously this one, you can screw it down. It'll stop being from going into the to the feed so you can take it in airplanes, jostle it around, throw it in your pocket, whatever. So I'm a fan now of vac fillers, which I really wasn't before. I have a bunch of my uh, old Schaefer vac fillers that I'll probably never restore. But you know, people, some people have offered, but uh, we need to follow up on that. So I know this is a video a lot of people have been waiting for, so thank you for watching. May have many great writing experiences, and this pen certainly would play a part in those if you decide to spring for one. And it just puts down ink on paper very well. And I, and I really do like this DC Super Show Blue from Monteverdi. I may have to pick up some more Monteverdi inks. Uh, tomorrow's uh, a get-together at the pen thing in town, so yeah, let's see what we can come up with. So we've reached the end of this video. Have a great day. Have a great life. Enjoy everything. Until we get together again, bye.